So this is just a short recording to show you a little bit about PHP MyAdmin, MySQL Workbench, and setting up an ERD. First of all, I'm in PHP MyAdmin, and I'm looking here at a table that I've created, or a database I've created called Twit. Um, this is meant to replicate that simple version of Twitter that uh, was in the earlier diagram that we had looked at in class. As you can see here, there's four tables, links, tweets, users, and user types. Um, users, pretty self-explanatory. User types, whether you're an admin or you're a regular user. Tweets, the messages that people post. Links, it's the full URLs and the short form version of them that would be inside the tweets. Um, so that's about it for this. I'm going to switch over now into MySQL Workbench. Now, I'm already connected here to the database. I'm looking at the summary of the schema. Schema is the name, if you look at this uh, panel over the side here, under schemas, this is actually a list of the databases that are connected right now. So when I first opened MySQL Workbench, I get a screen that looks something like this. This is a connection that I created to my local host. I'm using the root username and password to connect. If I click on the plus button here, you can see I can create a connection name, um, enter the username. When I click on the OK button in the bottom right here, um, that will prompt me for the password if it hasn't already been saved. You can save the password when you enter it if you want. So I have this connection already. Once I got that, I opened that connection and it gave me a list of the schemas or the databases that were inside of that connection the ones that connection was allowed to view and if I right click here see I can go to schema inspector that's what this is right here it's a list of all the columns inside each one of the tables so I actually used MySQL Workbench to create the tables um, the end result, what we're trying to do is we're trying to create a diagram like this that shows the users, user types, links, tweets, and the connections between them. You can see if I mouse over this connection right here, we get two highlighted fields. The type ID, which is the primary key in the user types, and that is connected to the type ID in the user tape, which means these numbers here have to exist in this list of numbers right here. There is a little symbol here. You can see there's a slash that goes across and then here there's a little triangle. This is a one-to-many connection. So for each entry inside here, each unique number, there's going to be multiple values in here. Here's another one. User ID. It's in both tables. In the users table, this is my primary key. Over here, this is a foreign key. So this is a restriction that I've placed. This is the definition of my foreign key. And one more over here. In the links, I've got a tweet ID, which appears many times for the one time that it would appear in here. So how did I get to this diagram? Let's close the diagram. Close this off. Back to here. This is my schema summary. Again, right clicking on this, I can go to schema inspector to take a look at this screen. My tables themselves, if I right click, I can choose alter table from that list. And there we are. This is the field right here, same as the one I've got open. Close that one. There we go. It shows me all the columns inside this table and I can define primary key, not null, it's unsigned, and AI is auto increment. So column names, the data type used, and then the options that you can set. Um, we can create new tables inside here if we want. Up at the top, these icons, these buttons are used to create them. So this one here that looks like a database, if I click on that, I'm creating a new schema. Effectively, I'm creating a new database. 
This is for adding a new table. So if I, oh, I have to select the schema first. Once that's selected, now I can say new table. So I click on that. Here it is. Stuff. I can click inside here. My stuff ID. It's going to be an integer. It's not null. My primary key. It's an unsigned integer, meaning it's only positive. There's no negatives, no sign. And I'll make it auto increment. Stuff name, varchar45. And I'll say it can't be null as well. So we just continue to um, do that. If I slide this up slightly, you'll see here that there is a foreign keys. If I click on that, a little bit uh, squashed in here. There we go, that's a bit better. So foreign key name. This is when you create the restriction between the two tables to say that a numeric value in one field or in one table references a numeric value which is a primary key in another table. So let's say the stuff user foreign key. This is just a label. It's a name that we're giving to the relationship that we're defining here. Referenced table, so it can point to anything. Let's say users, and then it's my stuff ID column, which is going to link to the user ID. And then you can also define what you want to have happen. If the original value in the user table is updated, what do you want to have in here? I can say cascade, so copy the change on delete restrict it. So don't let them delete the primary value if it's in use over here. Well, we don't really need any of this stuff. So I'm going to revert that change. I don't need that table. Don't want to save it. It's not going to be part of my database. So you can see, you go in here, you create your tables, define your tables. After you've find all of your tables, the data types, the names, the options for them. After you've done that, create your foreign keys. Once those are done, that's when we're ready to create the diagram. So at this point, we're going to go, if I bring this back down a little bit, there we go. If I go to the database menu entry and reverse engineer, if I click on that, here we go. Now I've got an option box coming up here asking me, okay, we're going to start off with the local host. Yes, that's what we're working with. And there's a next button down here at the bottom. Let's see if I can bring this up in. There we go. So this is the one local host route. That's my connection. Fine, it's connected. Which one of these do I want to bring into my diagram? Just this one. Next. It says it worked. So I want to import these table objects, four objects. Yes, that's what I want to do. And by default, place it on the diagram for us. Excellent. Execute that. There we are. In behind, you can see there's a diagram that's been created. Next and finish. And here it is. This is, I'll just click and drag here to move these things around. So these are the various tables. And you can click and drag and move them around to organize your diagram a little bit better, make it easier to read, make it easier to see the connections. When you reverse engineer a schema, when you reverse engineer a database table, it will randomly place these things on the diagram. And you can click and drag. It keeps the connections in between the fields this is why we want to define those foreign keys so that we can see the connections between them on our diagram without having to manually create them afterwards. All that done, then you can save your model, call it whatever you like. So I called mine sample before, new sample, see MWB, that is the file extension for the MySQL workbench done. 
and there we have it. So that should be everything that you need to get you started creating your own ERDs.